All right, we're here today with uh, Ted Troxel over at Linear Labs. Uh, so, I pronounced your name right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Perfect. Yeah, All yeah. right, so I'm it's just. One so, uh, Ted is a co founder of Linear Labs. It's a tech startup that's in the Cleveland Akron area, um, playing a lot with AI. Uh, he's, he's pretty involved in the eight local AI groups. It's kind of how I met him. So, I wanted to let him kind of take the stage and give us a little bit more about your background or how you kind of fell into AI. Yeah, so uh, it's not like a Cinderella story or. A child prodigy. It <laughs> starts at me being 18, studying business in college, and not really knowing what to do with my life. In fact, uh, I actually ended up switching to geology, and uh, I was working as an assistant chemist, which, again, is, has nothing to do okay. with geology. Yeah. But um, I, I just hated the industry, and so I, I wanted to start uh, start something new. So I, I actually got into um, programming as a software engineer. I was working for a local company here. I got introduced to machine learning, and they basically told me, you know, like, you, you can work as hard as you want. I, in fact, I don't think any company is going to tell you you can't work as hard as you right, want. Right, right, right. But uh, I, I just found it really mystical that, uh, you know, you can put data in and you get something out, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily defined uh, completely. So I, I just spent the last seven years learning as much as I possibly can about artificial intelligence. And so I went on to work with, you know, some other companies doing... Uh, uh, engineering and, and data science, and then uh, eventually just got tired of somebody that's not as close to the problem telling me how to solve the problem. So okay. uh, in September, I quit my job and I started a company um, with my co-founder. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we, we were just sitting around, and I said, "Hey, I've been working on this thing for uh, you know on and off for a year or so. Yeah, and yeah. And, do, and, do you want to just start a company?" He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was just that. Was like, yeah, okay. okay. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, this is yeah. a big deal. Are you sure? He's like, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That sounds uh, so. So I, I, I've also met the co-founder. He's a wonderful man named Adam. Uh, that sounds about what, how, he, how yeah. he reacts to most yeah. things. He's yeah. like, all right, all right. That yeah. sounds cool. What do you need me to do? Yeah. All right. So on that note, tell us what Linear Labs does. Yeah. So uh, Linear Labs looks to reduce the long lead times associated with A-B testing. So any company is going to be advertising on Facebook mm -hmm. with their product. Uh, Facebook typically, depending on the size of your organization, will say mm -hmm. you need to spend like anywhere from three three hundred to three thousand dollars a week in advertising mm -hmm. just to reach your audience. And of course, you have no idea like what's the best words to be writing or what's the right images to be mm -hmm. using to best engage your audience. So you, you know you might try a different type of or different couple of variations, and that's A/B testing in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Take some ad co ad copy, make a variation. See which, See which one, one does better, right? Yeah, but they don't tell you why one worked better than the other. You just kind of fail forward. Yeah. Uh, and so w when I learned about like this process, I I kind of looked at the the end goal or like the finish line of you just want a good and effective advertising that engages your audience, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of failing forward until you get there. Mm -hmm. So why not model how people engage emotionally around right. different things across different social media platforms and through emails? And say, hey, this is this type of content really uh, reacts well with this type of audience. Mm -hmm. So, our artificial intelligence can classify things between uh, age groups, genders, uh, hobbies or interests. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, uh, and then thirteen different emotions. And so, we use that data to say, you know, this type of person in this demographic, so eighteen to twenty-four right, year old right. males that you know like the Browns and drink Bud Light. Or they're going to react mm -hmm. positively to this, and you should use this type of image, and we'll describe the image for you. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, you can go from your first draft to your final draft in about the time it takes to finish your morning cup of coffee. Yeah, okay. So, I guess, was that a project that you were working on at your previous employer then? Or, I guess, how did, how did you yeah. stumble into that? Um, yeah, so I, I did consulting for a little bit with a company called Remesh. They were, okay. they were in Cleveland, now they're in New York. Um, now they have actually some guys back in Cleveland. That are working here, uh, so um, that that's when I started learning about um, artificial intelligence being applied to marketing, mm -hmm. and so th they help out with uh, data collection in the market research aspect. But that stuff goes to then inform the marketing communications people, and that's when I saw like that that opportunity to develop a product that gets you to that that finish line. And then uh, just kind of over time, just on my own, I, I started working more and more towards this thing to where you could just type in you know your tweet and see how many people are going to like it before right, you right. test it out
Interesting. So yeah. that, that was what they were working on there, kind of, yeah. that so, social media thing? or uh, So, no, they, they were working with doing virtual focus groups. So okay. if you wanted to go out and uh, have a focus group, typically it would take, like, a lot of work. You mm -hmm. get a couple people in a room. You have problems with, like, dominant voices where somebody kind of yeah. demands some conversations. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. So that I, I was helping them with their algorithms in that aspect. Interesting. So, uh, and I'm, I'm fascinated with uh, people that get into some, some kind of part of technology without having really been, you weren't really on a technology path up until no. you just went, I want to do AI, right? So that, that is a Cinderella story, I guess, as, as much as you're going to yeah. get, right? Yeah, well, so I, I, I kind of skipped a, a part of like really what got me into technology and actually what got me a job in software is um, I, I used to be a rock climbing instructor and... Uh, I, I built a rock climbing wall in my garage, mm -hmm. and a big problem with rock climbing is those holds are really expensive. Like something the size of your yeah, hand yeah. is like twenty bucks. Okay, you need you, you need know hundreds, uh, yeah, 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 hundreds. Yeah, yeah. And like I'm in college, I'm broke. I have like no money. Yeah. Uh, so I started making those my, on my own. Okay. Because um, I I knew the science behind it, and I wanted them to be good. So I wanted something to be able to do QA on it, like like quality yeah, assurance yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. So I built a UV spectrometer. I bought something cheap on, online because like UV specs are okay. hundreds of dollars. Yeah, Again, yeah. I'm broke. Yeah. So I built something using an Arduino that could calculate um, the UV spec based on, on what I wanted to, okay. to analyze. Yeah. And so that, that actually started me off into programming was through like Arduinos. And then I got more involved in like <laughs> embedded programming and yeah, yeah. artificial intelligence. So Yeah, that's not what I thought that you were going to say at all. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, so that, 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 that's, I, I, I guess that's... Like yeah, that was your first, your first foray into it, yeah. I guess, was buying a... Uh, so what, what is the device? A, a UV spec. So a sometimes UV, yeah. uh, UV light through some type of material that you yeah. kind of test. Okay. To and see the, like density or... Well, so the molecules are constantly vibrating yeah. and so if you shine at a certain uh, frequency the molecules will absorb it and so you can see like how much absorption is through it so, and, and that that like helps you understand how safe it is to hold on to yeah yeah okay, so that, that's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, like that's the quality we're, we're testing yeah, yeah 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 so you're checking to make sure that you have the right type of polymers in your materials okay or like they form correctly okay and so by controlling like the voltage um, you can yeah. do that okay so you go from that, and then you so you get you dip your feet in the software, and that kind of makes you turn into to technology. And then I think naturally you were like, well, AI is new. I want to look at that. Or yeah, uh, well, so it's I, I I was doing natural language processing, which is just teaching computers how to understand text. Like when we're having a conversation, and um, you know things aren't really understood, but I followed up with you know what I, you know what I mean. You can kind of fill yeah, the gaps. Yeah, yeah. So teaching computers how to understand when I say you know what I mean. Um, that kind of led me into uh, more natural language understanding and this idea of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. where you're designing computer programs to make decisions intelligently. Yeah, okay. And so um, I got grilled on a, a previous interview I did uh, for basically saying that AI's biggest business uh, um, application is sorting. I, I view AI as like the master of sorting and, yeah. and, and, and probably a oversimplification for sure, but like that's like when I look at blockchain, it's trust. Mm -hmm. When I look at, at AI, it's, it sorts data. It, it, it helps us ascertain yeah. kind of how that's going. How else would you get, what other gross generalization would you give to help the layman understand AI's practicality in business? Um, regression, but uh, that's predicting values at a certain time. So we we do regression with predicting um, open rate or click-through rates with emails. Mm -hmm. So based off of the content of your email and your subject yeah. line, we can use that data to then predict. So predictive analytics is a big opportunity. And yeah. that, that can be applied at predicting failure mm -hmm. in different machines, yep. um, predicting you know the growth in stocks. Uh, I mean, quant trading is huge. Um, yeah, yeah. Be know. Betterment, I know, is, uh, is, mm -hmm. a, is a pretty popular AI platform that does uh, yeah. some robo-investing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, the, the sorting thing comes from, like, the classification. Yeah. Uh, like, in machine learning, there's really uh, only two, two things you can do. You can classify things or you can predict things. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, applying those to anything. So, like, for sorting, it's just classifying things and yep. sorting. Yep, like yeah. So... Um, and a lot of the, uh, 
uh, again, kind of the other branch of things that, that I kind of have a direct interface with is IoT, and that is just mm -hmm. something that just generates data. Yeah. And so that's that's where my experience with AI is just sort like there's just too much. We need somebody to filter them into buckets, mm -hmm. and I only want to look at this very specific bucket, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you know that that's that that whole idea of there's just too much data to look at. That's something that we actually have a, a big challenge with. Uh, because marketers don't like data. Um, you, you can't show them a bunch of graphs. I'm I'm super mm -hmm. inquisitive about things. Like I want to know like why did this happen specifically? Like prove it to me. Right, right. Um, but they just want like they just want money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like what works. I want impressions. What yeah, works? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so so being able to refine that and uh, and kind of funnel that down into like some key metrics is is always important. But um, yeah, with, with IoT, like what's really interesting is uh, federated learning. This concept of taking a machine learning model and then training on your mm -hmm. end device. So uh, I, I don't know if you've ever looked at what Google's done with federated learning on that, where they actually On a high up. level, if you want to just give us uh, the clip yeah. version. Yeah, so um, Google will have this main model that they have, that some machine yeah. learning model, so like maybe yeah. predictive text. Yeah. And they send it off to your phone. Okay. And so every time you're texting, it's recording what you're, yeah. what you're saying. Right. And then at night, it's retraining this model that way, it's specific for you. Yeah, it gets it gets a little bit closer and closer yeah. to what you have. And then yeah, the the problem is you know the logistics of that is trying to ship that model back and then aggregating all this different stuff. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. It's so I guess that kind of leads into some of the challenges that I guess what are the challenges that you're facing kind of as you implement this this AI platform from a technological standpoint, as mm -hmm. opposed to, we'll, we'll get into the struggles of being a startup later, but yeah. you know, as far as like a technical standpoint, what are the challenges that you're, you're currently, as you're getting this product off and up into the market, what, what, do you, what, do you, what are your concerns? What, what, do you, what are you trying to get past? Um, there, there's, a, there's a couple, it, and am, I, am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah. 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 Um, one is uh, proving that's not bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th there was an article that came out. Um, I can't remember if it was forty percent of companies either did or did not. It's one of the. It's one of those two yeah. that didn't have our, like any type of machine learning that were AI companies. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. So you have people who are just claiming to be uh, an artificial intelligent company, and that, of course that's not even like has to do with the technology, but um, being able to show that you have good technology that you're actually implementing machine learning yeah yeah and that it's not just smoke and mirrors because mm -hmm. um, a lot it is um, but scalability uh, you know these models can take up a lot of room in your memory so mm -hmm. if you're cloud computing uh, sharing that across different networks mm -hmm. or different nodes in your in your compute network is uh, difficult but you know there's a lot of there's a lot of um, headway that's been made by Google actually in this kind of blended you know machine learning mm -hmm. DevOps type of yeah. uh, toolkits that they're coming out with so um, it's actually starting to become a lot easier like when I first started doing machine learning if you wanted to implement a neural network it had to be from scratch in C or C++ mm -hmm. and that's a lot of work mm -hmm. um, now the tools that you have you can do it in a couple lines of code yeah, you, are you using can, Python or yeah, yeah, yeah and Python. Python's super easy. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can implement some. You, you know, you can go from nothing to a you know, prototype yeah. in, in a day if you're familiar with the the toolkits. Yeah, which I I think is awesome to see this big explosion of technical companies. So, as and do you do you attribute the explosion of technical AI companies as also to or to the the participation Google has been in kind of the open environment of giving their uh, their Technology to others. I know we, we actually talked a little bit offline before we started about this, but Google gives a lot of its uh, resources away for people to use. Yeah. Is that something that, that that's something that you're utilizing today that you enjoy? I assume. Yeah. Do you think that's kind of what a lot of these tech AI companies are, are using moving forward? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I think the whole open source movement is really attributed to like the explosion in technology. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can go on GitHub right now and. Download a couple different libraries, chain something together, and give you a prototype for a product, um, and and be able to start a company off of that. Uh, I, I mean, Google's done a lot of work in developing uh, tools like Tensor to Tensor and TensorBoard mm -hmm. that allows yeah. you to take something from you know, an idea, creating a model, and then deploying it in production. Mm -hmm. uh, 
really easily. And in fact, that's actually what the tools that they use that they release is what they use. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so they're 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 selling Kool Aid that they're drinking themselves. Yeah, I guess yeah, is the best yeah. way to, to kind of articulate that. But um, I guess. Do you worry that having a product that, that you're putting out there that is running off of a lot of open source that's mm -hmm. probably tweaked and what that, does that, is that enough of a differentiator? Or how, as this market emerges, yeah. how, how are you competing with, with other kind of AI? Is it, do you consider yourself as competing against AI A-B testing people mm -hmm. or just AI marketing platforms that use A-B testing? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, so differentiating, like we, we will, tell you how well you do beforehand. Um, a lot of the companies that uh, are, are in A-B testing currently look to kind of take shortcuts in their estimations. So by that I mean uh, instead of doing a full week of testing, which you would typically do for any type of ad. So yeah. you, you know, if it does well on Saturday, does that mean it's a good ad or does it mean it's, more people were yeah. online Saturday? Right. Um, so the, they're trying to estimate whether or not that performance is indicative of the real world. Whereas we have enough historical data to say this is in general how it performs on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. based off of your audience. So in, in that aspect, um, I, I believe that we're really unique in um, really kind of uh, separating from the pack. But yeah, it, it is difficult, I think, to come up with differentiating technologies. Um, we, we, we happen to have that advantage to where we're doing something completely different. Yeah, you're first, so yeah. for lack of better terms. Yeah, which which is scary in a sense because you do have to right. prove that it's not bullshit. Right, uh, right. But, um, but yeah, like coming up with sentiment analysis, like for yeah. example, social listening, where you're just listening to different keywords. Yeah. Um, on like Twitter and Facebook and whatever, Instagram, uh, and just doing sentiment analysis like that. Uh, that started off in 2008. In fact. There's, um, there was like 80 companies that blew up in like 2009, and then last year there was one like company that started do, doing this because there's okay, no differentiating okay. technology, okay. which is crazy because it's growing at 30% every year. It's like a $16 billion industry. But it's all the same companies It's all that the are same growing. companies because all they're doing is the same thing because, again, you can go off, off yeah. on a GitHub, right, right. Build the, get the basic technology and just implement it, and then it's just becoming like which sexier interface do you have? So I guess is that is that what you're focused on then, is creating the best user experience for people when they're yeah. using your product? Because I, I guess like uh, I, I know a lot of people that are starting up, especially on the technical side, and a lot of the tech companies that I've seen start up, mm -hmm. uh, they don't think about, like it just has to be easy to use. Yeah. Like, sometimes people don't even want all the wonderful features and whatnot. They just want something they, they can use, they understand, right? Is that a... Is that something that you're really putting effort into? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, th there's there's like a rule. It's like you shouldn't be more than like two clicks or something like that in your user interface design. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's hard because we don't really have expertise in UI UX, yeah. which makes it a little bit more difficult. But yeah, um, you know, you, you can create the best product in the world. Mm -hmm. You can solve yeah. every problem. But if but it's not easy to use, people, it's people, Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just going to burn. Yeah. I mean, you, you see it all the time where like, I, I think um, like Microsoft came up came up with a touch tablet in like the late 90s, mm -hmm. and then it just crashed and burned because it wasn't sexy. Yeah. And then yeah. Apple came out with the iPad, yeah, you know, yeah. like almost a decade later, and it, you know yeah, it's huge. huge. Yeah. It was so, easy to use. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, remember, I remember. actually I had the Microsoft version. And I thought oh, did was, you? I thought it was real slick. Yeah. yeah. But like the they had a you know it the the big uh, the big selling point to that was you had the stylus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they're like, well, you need the stylus because you want to be able to draw, and then Apple's like. It, yeah. By the time we're done, nobody will use a stylus ever, yeah. right? And that's true. Every touch yeah. screen that exists on every laptop, nobody's. I mean, they made they Microsoft actually went back and made that uh, Surface, but like, I'm never in a meeting with somebody that has one of those that yeah. actually uses their their thing. Or yeah. if they do, it's a really fringe use, and the rest of the time they're typing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you want to just be able to touch it and scroll. Yeah. 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 Which, is, which is crazy. Um, yeah. Sorry, I I, I I totally forgot where where we were in that conversation. Oh, it's yeah, perfectly I, fine. A user yeah. interface. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it has to be easy to use. Yeah, um, that's not helping me. I'm so. I'm yeah, so that's okay. Blessed.
So as as your as your startup uh, in Cleveland, um, and you're kind of integrating this new technology, and uh, you're you're serving kind of uh, the mid market, safe to say. Are you you who who are you who are you marketing? Who is Linear Labs marketing towards? I guess? Yeah. So uh, we're looking to integrate with uh, agencies and mm-hmm. small to medium sized businesses. Okay. Um, you know, just like everybody else, eventually we, we want to get into enterprise sales, but mm-hmm. um, we we feel that we have uh, a good good product for yeah. for those people first. Okay. So like uh, I guess and the reason why I asked that is that it's interesting when you get into like a business that, that falls into a niche and they can't leave that niche. Yeah. A lot of people end up like um like with enterprise backup software, which is something that I've a little bit of expertise in, a lot of the players only end up catering to giant, massive companies. Yeah, and it's and they want to get into the SML or SMB, but they've priced them like they have a pricing model that only makes sense mm-hmm. for a certain amount of, uh, of of users, and you only find five billion users at yeah. you know the top five companies, right? So they're, they're kind of pigeonholed there. Whereas there's one player that has a model that works really well for mm-hmm. people that are in the SMB, yeah. But once the, once you go to the enterprise, their product is so expensive that they can, they wouldn't even look at it. So yeah. I, I guess it's it's interesting to see kind of how people position themselves. But do you think you have you have scalability then? Yeah, yeah. And and so what's really interesting about that to kind of piggyback off of it is, um, you know, when you go into enterprise sales, you you have to have a higher price tag because you have to assume that your product's going to be selling, or yeah. like saving yeah. them that much money or mm-hmm. have that good of an ROI. You know, I, I was talking to another company before about, you know, that they need to be charging more because, you know, when you have a lower price tag, it, it just says, I think that I can only save you this much money or yeah. like I'm only yeah. worth this much. Right. So it's, it, it is, it's difficult to find that sweet spot and something that can scale up. But uh, for that, it's just more features that uh, allow them to act more quickly that may not necessarily be yeah. needed yeah. At, for like a smaller business. So um, as as you integrate with uh, with these companies, I guess what kind of I don't, I don't know if you know this, but like what kind of ROIs do you do you anticipate? I mean, how much money do you think people are throwing away on marketing? I mean, I, I, as somebody Stupid. that pays for marketing, yeah. I can say that there's a lot of you know uh, like uh, I, I've been in a situation where we were discussing buying a billboard. Yeah. Not knocking billboards, but it's scary. It's a it scary is. thing to invest in. Did, 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 did I ever tell you about how? Sorry, I don't mean. To yeah, no, go for it. Yeah. Did I ever tell you how I, how I met my wife? No. Okay. She sell uh, billboards? No, I bought a I bought a billboard. Uh, so, so if we backtrack to like 2015, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, um, I was sitting in my friend's room and I was like, I should buy a billboard, and he's like, Yeah, do it. Uh, so I, I ended up getting in contact with like Clear Channel. Um, yeah. And I, I I don't mean to derail the conversation no, this is too perfect. much, but yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, so I got in contact with Clear, uh, Clear Channel. I was like, Hey, like I want to buy a billboard. Yeah, and they were like, "Okay, here are some billboards around Akron." Because yeah. at the time, I was yeah. living in Akron, okay. and um, so I, I started looking around, found one, and I was like, "Well, I have this like grandiose idea of like maybe I'll be, you know, I'll have like a lightsaber and I'll be like, you know, fighting a bunch of cats, or like yeah. maybe I'll put like my friend's <laughs> face up and be right, like, right. hey, like call me and put his phone numbers, like some <laughs> so something obnoxious, yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah." And so um, it, it, I'll. I'll I actually might have to bring this up for you. That's okay. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, uh, so I was working with this guy who went to Full Sail down in Florida, and um, I was talking to him about how I wanted to buy a billboard. And yeah. I had all these different ideas. Yeah. And so he's like, "Oh, like I went to school with somebody that did Photoshop professionally. Yeah, yeah. I should get you in contact with this dude. Yeah. And so I got in contact with him. I, I started sending him pictures of like. Uh, cats, of me, you. cats, <laughs> like um, you know, explosions. I was like, yeah, man, like this is what I'm thinking. Like this is, <laughs> you know, this is the idea that I have. Let me let me see if I can find it. Um, you know, get, can you put something together like this? He comes back a half hour later. Yeah. With this uh, this billboard idea, and here it is. That's the billboard. <laughs> oh, up. oh, I hit there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I yeah, here we'll, uh, we'll 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 probably put it up there, but yeah, and uh, so can you see that on the screen, yeah, um, that, yeah, yeah, you got that, yeah, yeah, and so <laughs> th- that guy actually ended up getting elected. So I'm not saying that I helped him get elected, but yeah, so I, I ended up with that. It cost me a large <laughs> pizza. I just sent it. I just had it sent yeah, to his yeah, house, yeah. and so I sent it to Clear Channel, and they're like, "What, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what what is this?" Yeah. Um, 
So like I, I'd write them like a whole letter, like t you know, disavowing any them of any responsibility because yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. you know, usually we know if it's like political yeah, or like yeah, yeah. you're being aggressive or like what you're advertising. <laughs> right, like, right. We have no f clue what's going yeah, on yeah. here. So, anyways, so she saw that billboard, sent me a message. She was like, "Your billboard's hilarious," and I was like, "Yeah, I know." Um, <laughs> and, and then we got drinks that day, and yeah. you know, and then you got married. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. So, so just for anyone that's just that's just listening to this, um, it's a billboard with Ted. Uh, you had two guns. In uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just kind of going oh, like that. He's, hold, with, he's holding his arms to yeah. the side. Uh, there's there's fighter jets with cats on the back. Yeah. So so there's yeah. uh, there's half a gaggle of F-22s with okay. rainbow jet streams. Okay. Then there's a uh, to my left, um, you know, maybe like seven o'clock in my left hand. Yeah. There's a great white shark, you know, yeah, mid yeah. backflip, and then yeah. there's a volcano off to my right yeah. with a kitten that's, you know, three stories tall, yeah. shooting lasers out of its yeah. eyes. Yeah. Um, and then it just says "follow me," and it's your Instagram handle. Well, so it's it's a so I got this and this went up in the fall of um, 2015, and Ted Two it just came out. Okay. So yeah. I'm actually the the third. Uh, Ted, I'm Theodore <laughs> Allen Troxel the third. So I put spring 2016, get ready for Ted three. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I made sure okay. not to use the same font or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. But uh, yeah. So and then I put my Instagram. And that was up for a month then. Or? Uh, it was up for three months. Three months. Yeah. Okay. It, it, okay. it, it was a pretty good uh, investment. So as somebody, a guy, going back to the conversation, as somebody that's been in talks for a, a billboard, they're not as uh, inexpensive as 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 you no. might think. Yeah. They're, no. We, you know, I, I don't know, I had some, I had a lot of uh, in, inaccurate assumptions about what a billboard would cost, and when they come in, they give you a, a giant um, portfolio, like, you need to get six billboards, we'll rotate them, this is going to be a two-year contract, this is going to cost you thousands and thousands, and, and, and it was interesting when you're trying to skinny that down, and then, you know, when you finally agree, all right, I'm willing to spend 10 grand on billboards, right? Then you go, how do I track this ROI, yeah. right? You, you, so you're sitting there and you're like, how, how, how do I, how do I guess? Is it impressions? Is it brand recognition? We have it's, a logo. People kind of know that logo, right? Our logo's on the side of a building. How, what, what is the value, right? And um, their sales model is interesting because it didn't convince me at all. Yeah. And this isn't saying anything negative at this this saleswoman that I was talking to or anything. But like, she, we were driving in the car and she's like, well, you know, th this many thousand people pass this every day. You know, this many people see this. You know, I'm like. Who, do you have like actual ROIs of the people that said yes? I saw your billboard and I and I was like I need IT. Mm -hmm. You know I saw this and this is this is what this is what I, I was like that's it. This is the billboard, right? And they're like, well, we don't really track that. And I'm like, why would you not track that if this is what you're selling? But it's, it's so hard. Um, like especially in marketing, attribution is probably the hardest problem to solve. Um, even in like the digital age, it's still really hard. Um, you know, uh, consumer packaged goods only attribute 8% yeah. of their revenue towards uh, marketing, you know, but it's still a huge, huge uh, part of their budget is yeah. advertising and marketing, which is crazy that you would But you're just throwing money into a well and you hope that it works, right? Yeah, you yeah. hope that it works. You know? Yeah, and so, like, even um, social media advertising last year was $67 billion. But yeah. that's just because people are on Facebook trying to guess at what works and what doesn't. But, but my argument against that is that Again, as somebody that's, that's looking at marketing, uh, you get you at least get clicks. You get you get you get legit impressions that are tracked. Like yeah. you can't you can't track that with with cars. No, right? no, and you, you can't. can't. Like you also can't verify that somebody's going to look at something. And then there there are arguments to be made that somebody's not looking at your. They're just scrolling past it, and mm -hmm. that's counting. But like at least you have some tangible yeah. numbers to hold, right? Yeah, yeah, and 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 even more for that. Um, you know, when you're writing with somebody, where, where are they looking? They're looking down at yeah, their phone, yeah, right. not, yeah. not out in the right. sky. Yeah, and, and, but like on the flip side of that, I will say that I, I look at billboards when I drive, yeah. you know, because I can't look at my phone. If I could yeah. reliably look at my phone, then yeah, I would, yeah. but I can't. Yeah. Uh, kind of going back to we need that driverless car like mm -hmm. yesterday for yeah. me to do my work while I drive. Yeah, but I'm excited for that. I'm super excited for that. But until we have that, I am looking at billboards. So mm -hmm. there's some value, you know, but trying to sit down with somebody and, and understand, well, this is what your ROI is. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you'll never have a perfect ROI on billboards. You'll never have a perfect ROI on social media. But... I feel like if you had better, just better analytics, you can then at least say this has a more, uh, this has a higher probability of working, yeah. right? 
I think that's that's where you're coming in. Yeah. That's, 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 that's how I am yeah. as the non-AI professional, let the record be known. Yeah. Uh, I don't work in AI all day. Um, I, I look at your products, I'm like, okay, this helps marketers get something that has a higher percentage chance of winning. Right? Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's so many different um, pain points that we're touching on that um, I, I'll, I'll just kind yeah. of start going yeah, through. Yeah, go for them. So your market research, your, your strategy and research team will go out and spend tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars collecting data to figure out who are the best customers. Yeah. They're like They're gonna have the highest spend, this is how we're gonna contact them, this is what we need to be positioned as. And then your communications team just says, I don't care about that, I just want clicks. Yeah. You know, so they'll just do this champion versus challenger model where they'll initially start off with something that, you know, is targeting this optimal customer. And then by the time that they they've picked the best ad, they're somewhere off. So they're just completely disregarding that, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars that you just spent to figure out who, who it is that yeah, you need yeah. to be selling to. But then also, like like I'd mentioned before, depending on the size of your organization, you're you'll you'll be spending anywhere from three to three hundred to three thousand dollars a week in advertising just for one variation. So if you run multiple in parallel, you're yeah, talking yeah. about spending tens of thousands of dollars a month yeah. just figuring out which Facebook ad works best. Right. Um, but if you could just kind of skip all that and just say, well, out of these four that I've created, this one's going to do the best. Here's how well it's going to do. And then also uh, we do suggestions on how to rephrase things to better engage. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with images. If you change out your creative to be this way, yeah. then you'll do even better. And, and you're still focusing on that target customer. Yeah, and so so basically you take, let's say you have three images. You, mm -hmm. you put take them in, you plug them in, and you're, you, the AI goes, eh, that one's best, but you know what would make the best one even better? Is if he is, did is, something is, like if this. If he did this, yeah, right? It, it describes to you in text form, hey, uh, you know, like maybe if you're a beer company, you know, it's spring, summer's coming up, you yeah. want to advertise your right. uh, your company, you know, is it, <clears throat> Is it like a backyard barbecue? Is it a group of friends sitting around a campfire? Is it a bunch of college kids at a baseball game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it will tell you, you know, maybe it's a backyard barbecue of people drinking bottles of beer. Yeah. And that's what you should be using. So where are you getting your like statistics for all that? Yeah. So uh, we we are constantly mining data on social media. So we put a couple million posts into our database every day. Okay. And so we look at how people engage with that. Um, but what's interesting is um, when you do, like, it, you, you would think, you know, you're just evaluating what that post is, like what type of emotion that post has. But we're actually looking at what type of emotion that elicits from your audience. So mm -hmm. how is your audience engaging? Yeah. So we're putting our AI in the shoes of your audience yeah. and saying, hey, they're going to, you know, they're going to like it this much. They're going to have this much emotion. Like, do you want to uh, go for, like, this really enthusiastic audience or do you want this like FOMO fear of missing out yeah, yeah. type of audience like what type of emotions are you trying to elicit from them yeah. and that's what you're getting when you show this advertisement to our AI okay and of course the best thing about that is it's just a snap of a finger and you got right. results so so the AI will actually say like okay this this ad is clearly centered around uh, keeping up with the Joneses yeah. right or this ad is just saying brand recognition yeah. like something like that so yeah. you have kind of different buckets that you put detail into and then it says, "Hey, was this what you were going for?" Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that's interesting. So, like, let's say hypothetically, we had a um, a studio, right, that had several ads uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that ran. You could basically say, "All right, this ad will pop more because, you know, you're looking for creative people. They're yeah. looking. They're looking at you know color, contrast, and whatnot. This is what we'd suggest here. And if you want them to click on this because they don't want to miss out an opportunity, you know, this is the kind of promotion yeah, you'd put crazy. on and whatnot. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you're constantly mining data. You're constantly mm -hmm. updating the database. You're constantly uh, showing it different pieces of artwork that you know and how people worked with it. Yeah. Do you track like uh, conversation started based on it then too? Is that kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Okay. So so we look at um, like these conversation trees of you know when when you comment on or these conversational threads yeah. on different posts. So um, Reddit's a great example where somebody comments one thing and you just see this trailing uh, you know this trailing tree of different comments and so we take that into account like that network of how people are communicating yeah. and what kind of drives that so we look at like what type not only like the number of comments you'll get but what type of comments mm -hmm. will be elicited from what you just said okay and we put that in context yeah. of what you're talking about as well okay so do you have anyone that comes at you with questions like 
you're taking people's data or like you know you're using yeah. data without permission cuz cuz in my world uh, uh it is from a more like data protection cybersecurity standpoint we're all about your data's fine you know but if you do put data out into the world anyone can get access to it. and that's really what you're doing you're scrubbing yeah. data that people are publicly putting out there yeah correct yeah. so um we're not trying to hack into your computer we're not trying to learn correct. about your family um, what, what we're doing is we're just looking at what you like. how you're talking to different people mm -hmm. and we're just kind of taking notes and saying, yeah, that, that makes sense that that person would kind of have that opinion. About okay, okay. Uh, okay. You know, we're not trying to, to invade your privacy. We're just looking at, at how, how you talk to your friends. Interesting. Yeah, so like... Um yeah, there, 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 there are buildings that, that have we've worked in that have implemented uh, like museum kind of things that track where and when people go and what kinds of people go. Um, this is actually a project that uh, eventually turned into what Mancusa would have been working on, but yeah. he ended up going to a different company. But uh, basically, as you walk in, it's like, okay, um, we have all the men seem to be going to the Greco-Roman exhibit. All the women are going up to the paintings. You know, mm -hmm. how do we get people to go through every part of the museum, right? Mm -hmm. There are challenges to that, you know, and, and, and obviously it's not a perfect science either, but that's still tracking. And I remember when they unveiled this project, uh, somebody went and talked to me in the back, and they were like, hey, man, I don't think it's cool that you're tracking where all the guys are going. And I'm yeah. like, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, okay, I... Yeah. I yeah, and so so I, like just just to kind of continue on what I was saying, yeah. we're we're not if you're not logged into um, like Facebook or Twitter or Reddit or whatever, yeah, um, we're not invading like that type type of um, like login mall, yeah, at, at all. So yeah. like even from like an application standpoint, um, you know this isn't um, looking to get to bypass any level of privacy. Anything that you can see. Just do a Google search. Yeah, is, yeah. Is what we grab. But yeah, yeah, it, it is it is difficult, especially you know like p people talk about their their privacy all the time, but um, you know you keep your cell phone next to you wherever you go. Yeah, and if you use Google Maps like I do, uh, they always say turn on your location, and then you forget to turn it off when you're done driving somewhere. So now that right. that yeah. thing's sending data back to Google. Yeah. You know, every couple of seconds. Yeah. My car is getting GPS by like five different things. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and you know, I, I, I don't want to necessarily go down this tangent, but like, I mean, logging into a public Wi-Fi. Yep. You know, oh, you, for sure. Yeah. You, yeah. you go to the gym. You don't want to use your data to yep. stream. You know, your music service. So you get on their Wi-Fi, and now you're vulnerable. Yeah. Well, then that that opens up a whole other can yeah. of worms. That, yeah, that, yeah. You know, that's what pen testing is. Like, yeah. okay, well, now I can see all the things on your network. Yeah. And then, you know, one thing leads to another, and you're kind of screwed. You yeah. know, it's, it's just that's the nature of the beast, and it's the same thing that like if your smart fridge just emits a signal that anyone can log into, you know, yeah. you can just get into it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a crazy time in the world where, um, you know, your refrigerator is a vulnerability, or right. your um, instant pot is a vulnerability. <laughs> right. You know, like. Well, I think it's interesting because people are so focused on pushing products out before yeah. they think about the consequences, and that's. For better or for worse, I don't know if a, a fridge manufacturer needs to always be security minded, but they at least have to be aware, yeah, right, that that's a that's a thing. Um, I, I think like smart homes are super interesting, where it's you know if they connect to your Wi-Fi and you want everything to be interconnected, yeah, anyone can mm -hmm. can get in there. Sometimes you could just get in there and screw something up, yeah. right? Uh, there's social engineering where you can turn off the lights now. Mm -hmm. You know, I could park outside your house and just screw with you. you know? Yeah, it could be yeah. fun. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's see him turn this light back on. Let's see him turn this light back on. You yeah, know? and and so like the same concerns are also there with artificial intelligence of just pushing out a product. Um, yeah. You know, th there's like this Hollywood scare of like when are the robots going to rise up? But that's that's not how I would envision uh, like AI being destructive towards like humanity. Yeah. It's through somebody pushing out a product. And not doing the right checks and balances to where you have something that's you know sorting data yeah. and it sorts it wrong and now you have like a financial crisis because yeah. everything's being traded right. by you know robots or like machine learning algorithms. Or you could have something where you know you have some kind of device that everyone is now like their live livelihood is dependent on and yeah. then that just like it just crashes it on accident and yeah. all of a sudden everyone like the AI that was distributing insulin right or yeah. so, something like that yeah. you know automatically wipes out a, a group of people if they can't get insulin yeah. through another means yeah and so it, and, and that doesn't I mean that's just an error in development there's also you know adversarial attacks that you can do um, 
you know, a couple of years ago when before like adversarial attacks became popular as a way of training. Yeah. So where computers would either generate images or you'd put like a light filter over it to fool the computer mm -hmm. or the yeah, yeah. computer algorithm. Um, you know, that, that was an easy way just to put like a, you know, a couple different pixels to an image and it would change, you know, who it thought you were or what, what it thought yeah, you were. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's really interesting to see how, like even from that perspective, people can develop, you know, exploitive attacks to, you know, maybe I'm just wearing a mask and now I'm going right, in, right, right. you know, yeah. for doing the Amazon face recognition now because yeah. I'm, I'm you and I'm committing yeah. all these crimes. Yeah, well, I mean, the flip side to that is, though, I mean, all that security is, is, is on a scale, is the way yeah. I put it. Because, like, I've been in data centers where it's all biometric hands, and, like, mm -hmm. when my handprint's different, they're just like, ah, just go in. I'm like, really? Like, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. verification? <laughs> like, yeah. what was the point of this? Like, that's this. So, like, I mean, even today, like, nothing's, nothing's foolproof, mm -hmm. you know? If you have a physical human that could just unlock the door for another one, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's... It's way safer. Yeah, yeah. But, um... It's interesting kind of how that's, that's kind of getting filtered into a security interest. I guess my question would be, do you have security concerns with your product then? Um, no, not, not necessarily. Um, so there's um, eventually like, the, well, I, I wouldn't say eventually, that there is, uh, you know, issues of people worrying about, you know, what ads they're testing out or what they're interested in. Yeah. So we take, you know, good precaution in make, make, making sure that that's secure. Okay. But we're not um, being dangerous or... or, or uh, you mean that you have basically yeah. somebody's, uh, like a, you have ads that may contain, you know, material that won't be released for a while or something, yeah, something or of that something nature? Yeah, or something like that. Okay, um, okay. Also, like, it shows what type of position. It, yeah, so it, um, it's more of a worry from, like, uh, Corporate espionage perspective yeah. of okay. you know okay. somebody got that data. That's yeah. but you know again we're, we're you know, that's an extreme yeah. right yeah that's a, that's such an extreme because like everyone like from a security standpoint the people that are paranoid that somebody's going to go in and steal mm -hmm. their customer database and then share it with everyone it's yeah. like you, the the amount of variables you need for that to happen yeah. you need a somebody that can do it which yeah. can't there are there are not many people in the versus the population that can and can't yeah. do it. You need somebody that uh, is willing to go through all of the heartache of stalking you, mm -hmm. sitting outside, camping, you know, finding the right exploit, you know. That, that takes yeah. so much time. I mean, people don't understand how much time it takes to, to hack something, yeah. you know. No, and, and so that, that's a, actually a really good point. So um, I, I'm not going to go into detail about our stack, but our stack, so, so uh, by stack I, I mean like the layers yeah. of technology that we yep. have. Um, it's not as... It's not that common, um, so there is, and I, I'm sure you hate this saying, uh, uh, security through obscurity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, you can just create a server and and just run it on like an open IP address, like just open yeah. up your yeah. home home network mm -hmm. and run it and just a lot like start watching the different IP addresses, ping you trying to yeah, exploit yeah, yeah, that yeah. data. So, in, in case you're not familiar, like people will just say like, hey, give me like. Um, you know, like PG admin passwords, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like they're just looking yeah, yeah, for yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And, and once they get a hit, they just keep going and going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's obviously a kind of a fear that, that everyone has to go mm -hmm. through. But as far as, um, as far as what you have, you're not really dealing with a whole lot of secret sauce. So you don't, no. you don't have a whole lot of personal data that you're no. worried about. So that's, no. that's probably a good place to be. Yeah. In. Um, just to touch back on a point you made about everyone's worried about AI taking over. You have zero concerns about AI taking over the planet. No, no, I, I don't. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm going to quote somebody else. Uh, yeah. Andrew Ng's a, a really great researcher from uh, Stanford. I'm pretty sure that's where he's from. Uh, but he, somebody asked him about AI taking over the world, yeah, and yeah. he said, I'm more worried about children starving on Mars. Yeah. Um, and, and by that, he means, you know, eventually there's going to come a time when that's a problem. Yeah. You know, when children are starving on Mars. Yeah. But right now, that's not in the foreseeable future. Right, right. So. And, and AI is even farther out yeah. from taking yeah. over. Yeah, the, the way, uh, actually, I, I was listening to Lex Friedman. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Mm -hmm. He's, he's uh, I think he's out in BU. Maybe I screwed that up, too. Uh, I think he's in, he's in Massachusetts, at least. Hopefully, hopefully you're in Massachusetts. <laughs> but he was, um, he was talking about, I guess that's like, he's, a, he's an AI researcher, and that's, he just gets hammered on that left or right. He's like, that's just not how the technology works. Yeah. It's like not how it's set up. Like, yeah. Like, you know, he, he's so focused, and he's he's kind of he's really interested in, in learning how the brain works. And mm -hmm. one of his things is, I I am an AI because I'm interested in seeing how the brain works and trying yeah. to replicate that. That's the best way to do that. And he's like, 
we are so far from making yeah, a human yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you, have, you have, we have like one layer, and the brain is billions that all have different staircases. And, yeah, you know. yeah, and and what's interesting is I I don't I think um, I think we'll actually end up making something a little bit more efficient than the human brain. I mean, that's kind of where I, I would yeah, see that okay. eventually becoming yeah. where where once we built something that's as intricate as that, we say, well, that seems kind of inefficient. What if we did something yeah. better? Well, I would argue that a lot of what AI is is already more efficient at, at yeah. specific tasks, right? So that's yeah. the thing with AI. Nobody's building an AI that is that is a full replication of a human brain that has what we consider to be free will or yeah. that has opinions, right? It doesn't really have opinions. It has pre-programmed scripts of what you yeah. would spit out as opinions, yeah, right? Yeah, like this is a picture of a dog. Right, and but, but AI exists today as something that could already sort ads or, yeah. or, you know, verify which ads are better, you know, way faster instantly, yeah. right? At least from our perception. Yeah, yeah. So uh, artificial intelligence is really good at um, doing really uh, expert tasks. Yeah. So, so what we would consider like expert knowledge or expert knowledge uh, seems really expert to us because uh, it needs a lot of work and talent devoted to it. Yeah. But if you think about something that's programmed to only do that and do it really well, of course that makes sense that it's really good at it. So it's more general applications or general intelligence that's really difficult. Um, like for example, like uh, doing like co-reference resolution, which is just figuring out it, like what pronoun has to do with what subject in a sentence. Yeah. That's really difficult for computers. Like um, if I said like this is better than that, like computers have a really hard time yeah. understanding the difference between that. Mm -hmm. But just about anybody else is going to figure out what I'm talking about. Like, right, right. if I said that computer is better than that one. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll just get that. Hmm. So, uh, on that notion, I guess, how do you imagine your technology evolving as time um, passes? Yeah, so, I, I, so once we do, um, once we solve all the problems in AB testing, uh, we'll, I, I think long form content is maybe the next step. Um, currently, there's state of the art models that are really good at writing content, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think introducing things where like we can verify, like do fact checking, um, and develop content around some type of prompt will help promote uh, companies a lot better. I mean, right now it's it's an arms race to who can put out the most content. You know, content is king in any type of marketing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. That's how Google's doing SEO now. It's mm -hmm. no longer putting keywords in your meta tag in your web page. It's developing content that makes you look like the expert. Yeah. yeah. So by being able to uh, help content creators develop more uh, specific and expert-related uh, content is, yeah. I, I think, probably the next step. Right. So I guess, at least kind of from your uh, input, you think that AI is probably the uh, the gold standard, at least of, mm -hmm. of what they're putting out. And then, um, I guess, what other what other uh, wh who's competing with Google in the AI space right now? Who's um, going neck and neck? Who's going neck and neck? Uh, I think Facebook's doing a tremendous job. Um, they have uh, Jan Likon. Uh, he is their chief AI. Officer, he's fantastic. Yeah, he actually developed what's called a convolutional neural network. I, I don't know, probably fifteen years ago or something mm -hmm. like that, maybe mm -hmm. ten. I I can't remember. Um, but uh, so they do a great job at artificial intelligence. They they have a library that competes against uh, Google's library yeah. for machine learning called yeah. PyTorch. Okay. Um, that's that's the machine learning library that we use. Um, I think Amazon does. Uh, a, a really good job. Um, There's a butt coming. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think Amazon yeah. uses uh, a lot of um, additional feature engineering, so like coming up with things that make more sense from us, like yeah. like us putting our expertise into it. And then OpenAI, I think, is really challenging Google on their um, quality of research and, and pushing the state yeah. of the art. Okay. Um, so yeah. I, I'd say really between Facebook, uh, Google and OpenAI really are the, okay, are the top three. three. So where do you see AI in the next five years? Um, well, so I, I see AI being adopted really early by uh, industries that are more tolerant of risk. So uh, industries that I'm in currently, like uh, ad tech or uh, our tech, or, which is yeah. just concatenation of marketing technology, um, I see those industries really looking to adopt um, artificial intelligence and, and use that in, in those capacities, but I, I also see it 
um, starting to affect jobs of more automation. So, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, as a as a software engineer, it's your job to automate things. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's what you're paid to do. So, jobs that we that we think are more manual. I mean, that's that's a whole innovative process mm -hmm. is to find something that's manual and to just tell a computer to do, to do it. Yeah. Um, so, for our, our artificial intelligence, um, it is the ability to um, fit those fuzzy things like you you can you know most automation tasks it's if this happens or if you see this do that yeah but in things where like that you know tree of, of decisions is so large that you can't just manually program it that's where artificial intelligence comes in so um, things like early stoppage on uh, conveyor belts in production plants that are you know building cars or mm -hmm. something like that uh, identifying problems with that is, is a huge thing that costs a lot of money. Um, so like, I, I feel like um, marketing where your marketing automation is completely automated where you can do like long form content, generating new content. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I feel like um, it, in, in like automotive uh, manufacturing really is, yeah. is the next Next thing to do. We're seeing a lot, of, and that's kind of where the IoT integration comes in. I mm -hmm. see a lot of like uh, like predictive. So, in the past, people wanted to know when something failed. Now, people want to know when something is failing, yeah, so they or can going to yeah, fail. yeah yeah right yeah. like hey this is this is not good like yeah. you know they want that amber light or even like that whatever's in between green and yeah. amber right yeah so before they say hey uh, this this is going to be a problem we need to we need to look at this mm -hmm. now right yeah yeah exactly yeah. And, and there's the unplanned downtime and manufacturing is a huge problem and time sucks. So reducing that to like, um, you know, proactive uh, repair yeah. is gonna be the yeah. next thing. But, uh, you, you know, like stuff like that's manually done now. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, it, uh, and then, you know, truck driving. I, I think, yeah, I, I that's, think that's, that's coming now. Yeah. They already have trucks that are uh, driverless on the highway. They just, mm -hmm. they're not allowed to drive in the cities. Yeah. At least in Ohio. Yeah. But, uh, but industries I don't see it really affecting is finance. Um, you think? Yeah. Well, from, I, from a stock investor standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. From like a, like, a, like algorithmic trading, but um, I don't see it being introduced into any automation workflow yeah. in finance. Um, finance is really slow to adopt any new technologies. Like, um, you know, head funds managers are implementing trading algorithms. And, you know, like, uh, trading on, on the stock market, that's... Yeah, that's that's the, let's just call it its own bubble. But yeah. you're, you're saying, like, uh, even, like, taxes, automating taxes? Yeah, I, I, I don't see from a, a, a corporate adoption strategy of, like, big banks adopting something like that. Yeah. I see, like... Um, that being an opportunity to for startups to get yeah. into because there's a lot more risk. Interesting. And and I don't see finances taking. But the first risk. time I would argue that the first time a finance CPA startup has some AI algorithm mm -hmm. that comes in and just white. Just, I mean, it's so it just makes so much more sense to to do that versus what the old way is. I yeah. Think that everyone will be forced to adapt. I I, I think I think that's going to attack small medium businesses. You think but, enterprise will stay the way it is? Yeah. I and um. And unless you, unless it's able to disrupt the status quo so much until you that it gets the attention of the big players, yeah, yeah, then it's just an, an acquisition at that point. Right. Well, that's that's how business works. Yeah, today, yeah, right? that's yeah. true. <laughs> to kind of um, wrap this up into a nice ball. If somebody is coming into this saying, "I want to get into AI," how do you recommend they get involved? Uh, so, if you're in Cleveland, I would do the Cleveland AI Group. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find us on Meetup.com. Uh, we do uh, group sessions where we have talks. Uh, they also do the Fast AI course, so that's mm -hmm. Fast AI. Mm -hmm. um, that's developed by a researcher named Jeremy Howard. Um, if, if you're not in Cleveland, uh, you can look that up on their website. Yeah. They have coursework where you can get involved and in, uh, learn machine learning through there. Yeah, and the Fast AI course that the the Cleveland group has is more of like a study group that helps yeah. get through it, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's available anywhere. So, yes. So yeah, yeah you can yeah. you can you can access that anywhere. So. Uh, but Cleveland is a mm -hmm. is uh, a good hub for people getting together and helping each other out yeah. for technology. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's an IoT meetup. There's a cybersecurity meetup. There's yeah. Cleveland has a good uh, base of um, people of all uh, skill levels getting together to yeah. help help each other out with their projects. The Cleveland Tech Slack is an enormous resource. Yeah. Um, yep. So uh, try and get involved with that. Um, mm -hmm. You can ask questions on any 
channel on the yeah. Cleveland Tech Slack, and people will, will give you hundreds of responses. Yeah, and, and, you and you'll have actual researcher, like legitimate people giving you mm -hmm. answers, not just, you know, Joe Bag of Donuts that has yeah. an opinion. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Anything you want to plug or? Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, well, the Cleveland AI group was, was yeah. uh, one. Um, I'm also a member of Teals. So, Microsoft has a philanthropy called mm -hmm. Teals. It helps promote uh, computer literacy. Um, throughout schools in the United States. Cleveland has one. Um, look it up. Uh, Jake Taylor is a contact for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great opportunity. Once a week I go to Warrensville High School and I help to teach computer science, mm -hmm. um, teach kids like the benefit of learning um, how to use a computer more than just surfing the internet, mm -hmm. um, how to develop a career that's successful and um, actually has a lot more uh, longevity than you know most jobs might because yeah you know ai is just the next step in better automation so uh sure yeah. you know th there's two there's two types of people there's people that operate the machine and people that build the machine yeah, yeah. so um we're, we're helping people you know develop this or we're, we're helping kids develop this yeah. skills necessary that they may not yeah necessarily have access to otherwise um uh i start and clee is, is a great program as well yeah. um Ed? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So uh, get get involved in that if if you're looking to start a company or if you you are an entrepreneur. Um, yeah. There's all there's all sorts of resources for yeah. that in Cleveland. You know, yeah. we're really uh, Cleveland's really starting to to build a lot of incubators. There's yeah. uh, I mean, and that that goes beyond AI. But yeah. for AI or any tech startup, really, I would try. I would start in Cleveland is a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. No so the, yeah. So the, those are the three additional things that I'm involved yeah. with that. Um, we're, we're trying to grow. Do you want to let people know how to get in contact with oh, you? Oh, yeah. Labs, um, or yeah, so, so hide? yeah, so I'm sorry. <laughs> You're I, good. No. LinearLabs.io is where you can find us. Yeah. Um, our Twitter is LinearLabs underscore IO. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so, so we're only on Twitter and, you know, the internet. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, ch check us out. Um, send us a tweet. Yeah. Send, send us an email. Yeah, if you want to learn more, uh, or just hit Ted up on the Cleveland Tech Slack because yeah. he's there all day. Yeah. <laughs> or at least whenever I'm yeah. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, guys.